Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what I wanted to go over was the sequence of operation of most 80% and almost all 90% efficient furnaces. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and um, connect the R terminal to the W terminal to get heat to turn on. So anytime this board sees a 24 volt signal on W, the white, which is typically the white wire, that starts the sequence of operation of the gas furnace. So we're going to go ahead and get that running, and then I'm going to explain to you what's happening as it happens. So uh, I have the power off to the furnace right here at the switch up here and the door switch, okay? Typically there's another door there, and this is the door that was there, okay? And it's held in by two 5 16 screws, one there and one up here. There's a little sight for you to see uh, if there's any error codes on the LED status code light. Uh, I have a magnet I pulled out of a microwave. You can get two magnets like this right out of any microwave. You can use them as service magnets to hold the door switch down. What I'm gonna do right now with the power off, I'm going to go ahead and clip this to R and then I'll clip the other wire to W. Turn that on. All right, so now I have power going to my furnace. You hear the blower motor turning on right now. Anytime that you turn the furnace off in the middle of its heat cycle and you turn heat back on, the blower motor is going to run. The reason that the blower motor is going to run is to cool down the heat exchanger of the furnace because the furnace doesn't know how hot this is back here. So say. It went through the sequence of operation, and in the burner box right here, it was heating up the heat exchanger, but the blower motor never turned on yet. So what it wants to do is it wants to cool that whole heat exchanger down before starting the sequence of operation over again. Uh, back here, you can't see it on this furnace, but back, back here, connected to these red wires, you have a, a plenum switch. All right, it's a, it's a high temperature thermo disk back here. All right, and, and what that's doing is if that were to ever heat up too much, uh, then it will not even allow the furnace to turn on the sequence of operation. It'll turn the blower motor on typically and only for a period of time. But after that, it'll maybe lock out the system. Every furnace is built differently. Uh, but this particular one, the, the furnace will run the blower motor for four minutes and then it'll enter into a lockout status where somebody will have to turn the power off and turn it back on in order for it to run again. So right now we're just waiting for this, uh, for the blower motor to shut off. And then after that, there we go. The inducer motor turns on first. All right. What that does is it is it actually sucks the flames through the heat exchanger and then it pushes it out through the PVC pipe. So this is going to run first and then the pressure switch is going to electrically close proving that the inducer motor is actually running. After that, you're going to see orange through this little glass hole here, and that is the hot surface igniter. The hot surface igniter has to turn cherry red in order for this to ignite right here. Okay, I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to turn this light off so you can see it. All right, so it is it is orange. Now you have a flame in here running. Okay. Turn the light off again and see if you can see the blue flame. All right, so right now you have the flame in here, okay? The gas valve is the fourth step. So you have the inducer motor turns on first. Then you have the pressure switch closes the electrical contacts, proving that the inducer motor is running and nothing's blocking the exhaust pipe. After that, the hot surface igniter turns cherry red, powered by 120 volts. Then the gas valve, the electrical gas valve, lets gas through for three seconds. It's powered by 24 volts off of the control board. Then the flame occurs, all right, and it has to travel across all the burners until it comes to the flame rod. On this furnace, the flame rod is actually connected via this weight wire back here. The control board sends 90 to 100 volts through the flame rod into the flame. The electricity goes through the flame onto the ground and rectifies it. And the board senses DC voltage, okay? After that, 
what you have is you have a 20 second on delay before the blower motor turns on. The blower motor just turned on just now, okay? After the blower motor on delay of 20 seconds, the blower motor turns on. So what it was doing while the flame was running in here, before the blower motor turns on, it's 20 seconds. And what it's doing is it's heating up the heat exchanger so you don't have cold air blowing on the homeowner. So you want to know this sequence of operations so that if, say, three of the steps out of the uh, seven uh, occur, then you know that the, the fourth one is the problem. So, for instance, if the inducer motor turns on, the pressure switch closes, the hot sourcing there turns cherry red, and then the gas does not ignite, you know it's something either with the gas valve, the electricity, the 24 volts going to the gas valve, it could be the inlet pressure, or it could be what you set the outlet pressure to. So it could be one of those items could be the problem. Or say the inducer motor turned on, the pressure switch closed, and the hot sourcing igniter did not turn cherry red. So then you know, hey, maybe it's the hot sourcing igniter is the problem, okay? So I'm going to show you how to diagnose each of those in another, in another video, okay? Uh, I'll show you each step of the sequence of operation. Uh, but, but that's how it works, okay? Uh, beyond that, you want to always, before you even take the cover off, uh, check out with the status code light. If it's flashing, uh, count out the short flashes, count out the long flashes, and then look on the furnace door and see what that means. If, if there's some type of a fault, like a limit circuit fault, or if it says status code 24, in this case, if it was uh, two short flashes and four long flashes, that would mean that that fuse is blown. All right? If that fuse was blown, that would mean that the R or some type of power wire Okay, is touching the C, the wire off of the C terminal. So in the thermostat, turn heat on, R touches W, it comes back through the white wire, but if somewhere's along the line, W and the wire coming off the C, which is blue, touch, that will pop that fuse. So then you have to diagnose that. But basically, this is just a sequence of operation of the furnace, and I just wanted to share that with you just so you're aware. Um, of what you need to do during an initial diagnosis of a uh, of a furnace. All right. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AEC Service Tech Channel.